Welcome to the Fitness Plus Technology Podcast for club owners, operators, and fitness professionals. Each week, host Brian O'Rourke brings you an expert interview with a global influencer at the crossroads of fitness and technology. You gain the insights, tools, and inspiration you need to stay connected to the pulse for what matters most for your business in the age of exponential technologies. Hello, everyone, and welcome to 2019. This is Brian O'Rourke, your host of the Fitness Plus Technology Podcast. I hope you are having a fantastic new year, and hopefully your holiday was enjoyable. We took a few weeks off, but in the interim, we were speaking to global fitness technology folks uh, from around the world, and I'll be sharing uh, some details of our guests coming up uh, in the interim. I hope to see uh, my friends in Lisbon Portugal here at their big event in mid-January, as well as the forum event in Bologna in Italy, uh, the 13th through 15th of February, where I'll be seeing a number of folks, including David Mitten, my friend, and other colleagues at that terrific event. I'll be keynoting at both of those, so I hope to see you there if you're a listener. Of course, the final note is that Ursa will be in San Diego this year again. Who doesn't love San Diego? In March, that terrific global event will be going on, and I hope to see you there as well. I'll be speaking a few times, and of course, some terrific keynotes at that event, um, including um, my friend Denise and others. So I hope you make it there, um, and look forward to seeing you all. Um, Our guest today for this uh, uh, podcast is Deborah Goldberg. Now, Deborah is based out of Australia. And she's a fit tech entrepreneur. Um, She's a background in group fitness uh, and in technology. And, you know, it's been a great privilege to have gone to Australia a few times and having uh, known and interviewed and spent time with a bunch of really wonderful people down under. Um, I really like speaking to people like Deborah, um, who has a great perspective and some pretty cool new technology she is deploying and has deployed in the space. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy this podcast with Deborah Goldberg and talk to you more late uh, or see you soon, um, you know, this month or by March in, uh, at URSA. So enjoy this interview with Deborah Goldberg from Australia. Well, listeners, as I said earlier, we have the pleasure of another dear friend, innovation fitness entrepreneur from down under Australia, Deborah Goldberg. Deborah, are you joining us from... Yeah. North Bondi down there in New South Wales this morning? Yes, in beautiful Bondi Beach. Bondi Beach. I Thank love you for Bondi. Having me. It's so great to talk with you. You know, uh, for the listeners, it's funny. We were just joking, Deborah and I, about when you're a technology type person, it seems like the technology gods love to uh, kind of play with you on occasion because we did this podcast before and we had a technical problem, which I've never had with any other guest. And I, I tend to find that as soon as I get a really technology oriented person on the podcast, some technology problem comes along, right? <laughs> it's so funny. But here we are again and, and um, I can't wait to share all the great stuff that we're doing in Australia that's going to impact um, the global industry. Yes. And so I look forward to our chat. I look, look forward to, and you were mentioning, you know, since I guess because of our Les Mills connection when we were distributing it and many of our friends down there. So Nigel Champion, of course, Mel, um, you know, Steve Jensen, you know, even Array with the Box Master, you know, our friends, Jane and Brent Hollow, JT, of course, Chantel, uh, you, and I'm going to miss some people, which is unfortunate. Fortunate because I could go on and on and on uh, of the people that we've known and have really great relationships with from Australia and down under. A fantastic and innovative marketplace is Australia, wouldn't you say? It's a fantastic uh, country. It's a fantastic ecosystem that's happening in in Australia. Um, the the hub, the tech. Hub is just incredible. There's so many eyes looking down under, and we, I'm just so lucky to be part of it and to be surrounded by so many talented people within the fitness industry 
that we're combining our passion for tech. So it's a great time to be part of the fitness industry and the tech industry. It certainly is. And you, you know, your background, and I want to share with our listeners who don't know, you know, you have this great background in fitness in the group fitness space and more. Tell our listeners a little bit about your ethos in fitness in general in Australia. So my uh, fitness industry experience happened just over 10 years ago. Um, we, my focus was to bring uh, Zumba to Australia. And I was very lucky that the um, community, the industry embraced such a program. We licensed many instructors, created many jobs. We got a lot of people off the couches, which it's a real issue in Australia. I think we're the top five um, obese country. I don't have the right data with me, but I know we're up there, unfortunately. Uh, so we, we impacted the, the community really well. Then I became marketing agent for Piloxine. We spread the word and the love in Southeast Asia, which became very popular. And since then, I found my strength in community building. And I also have a passion with tech. So I mean, I'm a bit of a creative geek, if I could describe myself that way. And you know, I I saw, I still see a gap in the industry where people want to create, have a relationship with their personal trainer. They want to have a relationship or a mentoring relationship with their, um, you know, mentors. So that's how we became part, created uh, this new platform and new products and created a company now called Air Fitness, where we are um, building tech products specifically for the fitness industry. And what, you know, what is your perspective? So I know you go to the URSA events, you travel around the world. Um, you know, I follow you and everyone should, uh, Deborah Goldberg, on all the major social channels. Um, what is your perspective of, of that in the industry space and innovation in general when you're applying these things? And of course, Deborah, we're going to talk about subclass and, and your other products that you're, you're launching around Air Fitness. But give us your perspective about what you see are some of the key trends that are happening out there in the marketplace. You know, we, we all have gadgets. We all are stuck to our screens. But I see and feel that we still want to go back to that one-on-one -on -one having a relationship with someone. We can have the latest gadgets that measure how many steps we have, but we want to have someone next to us taking those steps. Yeah. And so that's what, that's my vision. Yes. And it, there's a lot of truth to that, you know, because hyper-personalization, these words that people throw around on user experience, you know, I think, uh, tell me what you think about this. The pure digital business models will be there, right? But the, um, the um, the real human type of business models that are that one on one that are using tech to make that connection even deeper. Would you say those are the best kind of brands and tools are the most successful ones? Will be that orientation? What do you? What is your thought? Yes, I, I agree with you, and and that's part of what the products we're building, or I want to build with my team, is member experience. I want to enhance that member experience. And keep those members going back to the gym or your boutique gym or keeping people active. Doesn't matter if they're young or old, we need to keep our community active. And it's going to be a, a merge. It's going to be a synergy between, like I said, that Fitbit or that Garmin or any other product that can count those steps. We want someone next to us taking those steps with us. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that's very... So tell us, you have a couple of out-of-air fitness, you have a couple of products that you've launched into the marketplace. One that we talked about before is Sub-A Class, which with our group fitness background and what we distributed Les Mills in the United States for a while, and I know you have a great familiarity with the challenges of, of group fitness and operations, et cetera. And this is a great example, perhaps, of a tool that's digital that helps people. Tell us what that idea came from, Sub-A Class, and, and what that is all about, that app. 
So Subaclass is a free app, which is available now on iOS and um, Google Play. And it's an app that connects fitness instructors with other instructors where they can help each other cover or sub uh, whatever class they need to. So the idea came by me being on my WhatsApp groups every single day. I could see and feel the instruct the pain instructors were going through by finding covers and posting in various platforms. And it was actually an idea 2017 <laughs> that the idea come through came through. And I have a great CTO who's based in Melbourne and I gave him a call, gave him the idea, and we just came up with a product within eight weeks. Wow. The the product has been used Globally, it's worldwide. So if you want to try it out, go to Sava Class. But the the idea is to really solve that pain that instructors have, that group fitness managers have. I know of even club man- managers spend three hours on Facebook managing groups, finding subs. This is this is a um, very lean product very simple to use. We you have data, we have analytics. So it's we're going to see a lot of things that we haven't seen before. And what does that mean? So, you know, of course there are many challenges. Basically, you know, what does it mean for a club? It basically the challenge is, hey, someone needs someone to sub their class. You know, an instructor needs someone to get their class sub. Some instructors are looking for classes. And some, you know, clubs want to make sure they don't cancel their classes for their members, right? Is this a platform that solves all those problems? It solves all the, those problems, Brian. Especially, again, it's the member experience where the instructor, they can't show up to the class. They need someone to be there for their clientele, for their members. Because we're there for them. Yep. It's not about us. It's about our members and our participants. And also for the gyms, you know, we can see uh, cost per class. We can see how many members or for me, the best pitch is when the instructor comes to you and says, I want to pay rise. We can actually see how many classes that instructor has covered that month and how many he hasn't showed up or she hasn't showed up. Right. So, you know, there's no, it's very transparent with all the data we can see. And also for the different brands, we'll be able to see what is a class that's being more covered. And that's an indication that that particular program needs more trainings in that particular city. So when you look at an app like Subaclass, right? I mean, it's a clear pain point, a clear need. Um, How many problems are out there in the global fitness space that require a person with your vision and and a forethought to say, hey, let's solve this. I mean, why? I mean, I, we see a lot of it, but I'm curious as to your perspective on that because um, that's what innovation is all about. What I mean, do you think there's just an in a, you know in a, uh, infinite number of solutions that are unique given all the opportunities out there today? Look, there there are many solutions, but there's only one problem. And that problem within the industry is global. You know, you go to a gym in Berlin, you go to a gym in Tokyo, you go to a gym in Sydney. That behavior of a fitness instructor is the same all over. (laughs) So I think to have that innovative, to have that vision, you do need to be in touch with your community. Yes. I agree. Right? You need to talk to your instructors. It's, But at the same time, you do need to talk to someone in a high-level position where they can give you their KPIs, mm-hmm. their, where the, you know, the bottom line figures where you can analyze both pain points of the business. Yes. Because at the end of the day, the high-level management is the one paying the wages. Yes. But the people at the bottom are the ones showing up for the members. So I think there's a few of us out there (laughs) that can see that. You know, I I consider myself a creative person, but within the box. Yes. 
But you also- so I move around the box. <laughs> yeah, you are. But you also have been in the group space for many years. And it's kind of the Malcolm Gladwell 10,000 hour rule. You know, it's it's easy to sit around a, a coffee and imagine what you could do in the way of a business with innovation. But I think that, uh, you know, what's really valuable is when you've been immersed in the business for so many years, you really, I think, have empathy for the the real problems that, you know, some people might see and not think is a big deal, where when you are a person that has been in it as long as you have and have seen it, you know it's a big deal, right? <laughs> yeah, correct. Uh, and thank you for, for saying that. And I think that's why we have a duty of care yes. to come up with these kind of products that's going to solve problems like subbing classes, uh, like keeping data and improving those products as well in listening. You can't make everyone happy, but you just need to listen to the pain of the instructor, of the club manager, of the business owner, and then try and come up with the best product that's going to disrupt to solve problems. Yes, that's wisdom, listeners. You know, a lot of people we want to get in business <laughs> Um, and, you know, it's hard to create products, execute things, but the ideas behind them have to be, you know, practical, legitimate, and more than anything, as you said, Deborah, they have to be, they have to address real pain points, not things that are in people's, you know, minds as pain points. But you're, you, you're doing this with a new product as well, which is an MVP class. You'd said that, you'd shared it with me. Can you share with our listeners your new idea that you're working on now? Well, we just launched a um, product called Morphus, and it's a global fitness marketplace, which is going to help connect active, an active person or active community looking for a fitness professional. So think about it. <laughs> I like to say it's like the Tinder of fitness. Because you will be able to see the trainer's profile, see their qualifications, and see that trend is going to suit your training style. And you'll be able to search for their available sessions. Uh, you can see the rate. You can do reviews. And I think it's going to be that platform that's going to connect everyone in just one place. We're, going, we're building content for the end user. We want to educate the community, what exercises are good or explain why a personal trainer is telling you to do 10,000 squats for that great um, summer body or uh, a mom coming back from um, postnatal mm -hmm. exercising. So I'm very excited about this platform. You know, the industry um, trainers are only lasting 18 months yeah. in Australia. Yeah which is a big problem. Yeah. So hopefully this will be a platform for uh, the new personal trainers, zero to two years, mm -hmm. you know, where they're struggling to find clientele. Uh, we will create leads for them, but we also giving them business tools, marketing tools, pushing them through our social media, social platforms. So, we want to ensure that they last more than eight, 18 months in the industry. With respect to that, because that's a global problem too, right, uh, is the sustainability of these, uh, you know, professionals who are often great fitness enthusiasts. But isn't it true for a lot of them, they don't have the resources and support from a business perspective? Would you think that's a fair, simple assessment? It's very fair, Brian. Uh, we feel, especially I feel, that when these professionals that are so passionate to train others, those business tools are not really being given yeah. throughout their education. Yeah. And that's how we build Morphus. We have built a very simple business management tool where they can see their invoicing, they can see all their income coming through, and we're there for them. You know, we, of course, we want to build a, a great platform, but now we're just starting small, very lean. But, you know, we want to build it to a point where we can actually give webinars, education, and keep these people in the industry. You know, they invest a lot of money. It's our duty of care 
as leaders of the industry to have these products, providing them a longevity in the economy of the fitness industry. Do you see a lot more of products and solutions like this being business oriented to help both operators and professionals become more successful. Where do you think are the biggest, obviously you think this is a big area of opportunity because you're creating a product around it you have, but what do you, what do you see? Do you see more of this going on? Where, where do you see in the marketplace the growth coming from? Is it is it, obviously there's demand, there's the issue of the couch as you brought up, there's a need for activity. Uh, we know about the global inactivity crisis. You're, you're a very well-read person, you understand the industry. But from a delivery model perspective, from a, from a, a way of delivering service and helping people b- build more sustained businesses, are these the kind of tools that are gonna really help that? I hope they do, those are tools that are gonna help the industry. Uh, but again, the product that we've come has come in mind is again to enhance that member experience. I do see a lot of business tools for the personal trainer, mm-hmm. for the gym, but I haven't seen a product yet yet mm-hmm. that talks to the consumer. Mm-hmm. So we build this product with the consumer in mind mm-hmm. and thinking about how we can support the personal trainer start their business. So once they grow, they can go to stay with us, of course, or we can build, grow with them, or they can go to more specific business software. But definitely Morpheus has been built with a consumer in mind. Yes. Because at the end of the day, they're the ones using it. Of That's why we done a web app um, site instead of an app. Because people like to browse when they're at work. They like to search when they're at work. And people really only download an app they're going to use. Yes, I agree. And by the way, listeners, in the show notes, you're going to see morphus.fit, M-O-R-F-U-S dot fit. And then, of course, sub-A class, S-U-B-A-C-L-A-S-S dot com, where you can check that out. And as I mentioned before, go to Deborah Goldberg on all the major sites. You can see her. And, and I really want to kind of get your perspective now, Deborah. And, you know, our listeners don't realize we don't rehearse these things because you and I can chat just fine. We had a lovely dinner chat at Ursa. I won't tell everyone what we talked about, but uh, we like it to be a <laughs> nice chat. But but here, I'm curious, you've done these things with your background, you're an entrepreneur. Tell the listeners what your viewpoint is um, when it comes to building these companies and these ideas. What are your biggest challenges that you've experienced? Because you've been doing this for a number of years now, you've been innovating. And I'm curious to get your kind of any pointers you'd share for the audience, because there's a lot of people out there that are launching new companies, they have ideas. What advice would you give some of these folks, if you don't mind? Thank you, Brian. Look, it's been a challenging few years because you you need to start with an idea, right? You need to put that idea in pen and paper, do a little beautiful roadmap and, and break it down and validate your idea. And you need to validate that, that idea yourself. I think that is the first challenge within the uh, entrepreneurial life. It's validating your own idea and believing in yourself. If you doubt your idea, it's not going to go anywhere. So you truly, truly need to believe in it. And you need to research. Go to research your industry, talk to people, reach out to a mentor, and then go and execute your idea. Take it slowly, day by day. I'm actually reading a fabulous book, which has helped me in the last six months. It's called The One Thing. And it tells you how to concentrate that one thing today that's going to impact your goal in the next year, in the next five years. So we want, you know, we're used to now instant gratification. And that is a challenge. Things take time to execute, to launch, and become successful. So take your time. That would be my advice, and that is the biggest challenge I find in the the entrepreneurial life. Of course, money and investors and all the rest that comes with it, but attend conventions, connect within associations that relate to your product, you know, 
joining Fitzy has really helped me and talking to you and reaching out within that network has helped me a lot this past 12 months since being a member. So, yeah, that's that will be part of the advice as well. You know, you and I are so aligned on this, Deborah. That's why I like you so much. You know, that. Oh, thank you. Brian. Well, no, your, your wisdom, you know, believe, do your homework, um, seek mm-hmm. help, network, be patient, and be focused. This is a long ball. As I tell many of my friends that are, you know, we build companies, we've been doing it for many years. And that's kind of the counter negative narrative today where people like to think it's faster, you know, the overnight success that isn't an overnight success. But in talking with you, I think that is great advice for anybody that's looking to launch any company, let alone a business that's innovating in the fitness business. Deborah, you're so kind to get up so early uh, down there in Australia. Are there any uh, parting thoughts that you would like to share? Of course, I'm going to see you at URSA. I'm promising friends I'm going to hopefully be in Australia uh, for Filex this year. Um, it's been a couple of years since I've been down there. I need to go. But in closing, what any other thoughts or insights or views you'd like to touch upon for our listeners today? Well, I, I think that for 2019, a lot of great things are going to happen. Uh, I think there's a new generation coming through. And I really want that generation that's been around longer than me <laughs> to really open our their arms to that new generation. Yes. And s- that that is really my <laughs> my final thought. It's it's uh, very maybe added to your previous question. That's maybe one of the challenges as well. There's many set up businesses, set up clicky things. I don't. Hopefully, I'm not very political. You can edit that out. Uh, no, we don't um, edit anything here. I, I I understand what you're saying. Keep going. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> I think there's uh, there's a new new blood new vision, you know, even Les Mills has a new CEO. We're the same generation. We need to be embraced. So give us a chance. I think that's so true. So, you know, in closing, uh, best wishes to you in 2019. I know we're going to see each other, hopefully at URSA, if not at Filex this year in San Diego. Uh, Listeners, check out morphus.fit, sub A class. Follow Deborah Goldberg. Deborah's been a wonderful uh, friend. And uh, I am so glad we got to reschedule this, Deborah. I am so sorry for my technical snafu. Uh, and this will be our first podcast for 2019, and it's an appropriate one. So uh, thank you for all you're doing, and uh, we're in your corner. Keep keep innovating. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for your support and for always cheering me up. <laughs> and I can't wait to see you in Australia. Oh, I can't wait either. Thanks, Deborah. Hi, everyone. This is Brian O'Rourke again. Thanks for listening to the podcast today. I hope you enjoyed it. The podcast is brought to you by the Fitness Industry Technology Council, as well as my company, The Dairy Ventures, Moon Mission Media, and others. We hope you enjoyed the content. Please feel free to share it and join us again soon when we bring to you another leader in the fitness space talking about technology and what it means to our industry. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you again very soon.